Hello, I'm Kari Tammi. I'm a mechatronics professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering in School of Engineering, Aalto University. Uh, I came to speak about uh, digital twins, how they uh, possibly change the way we design machines, vehicles, why not consumer products. I would like to say that they also might change the way we see the systems or uh, anyway larger entities and the way uh, we offer services related to them. I'm a responsible leader for Digitim and Machinate project which are both looking at digital twins in uh, different perspectives. Whereas this Digitim is more like to make interfaces in, uh, in machines this machine aid is more like uh, covering the life cycle, usage, updates, retrofits, and so forth in machines. I try to cover the argumentation why we do digital twins, what they could be, and how you could possibly realize them. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is not one correct answer. Even there are quite many definitions of digital twins. Still, I think it's a half buzzword, hype, and half like real business and real doing. Uh, there are also quite many challenges, just to mention different realizations, lack of standards, excessive hype, uh, also maybe maybe like uh, use cases where you really have a good prospectives to have benefit because uh, in the end of the day someone has to pay the extra let's say measurements analysis modeling and so forth but uh, I, I try to elaborate these questions via few examples so Maybe the first question is why we do these digital twins. Is it for fun? Well, maybe for researchers and, and, and other enthusiasts. But uh, like I said, in the end of the day, there has to be somebody who actually pays the fun. So there has to be some business potential. Okay, there could be other benefits as well. Safety, maybe performance, surveillance increasing capacity. So this is quite usual engineering reasons, I would say. So, so you want to do it better than today with the lesser, lesser effort and easier and more efficient. In the presentation title, I was uh, referring to engineering witchcraft and uh, the loose connection to, to the engineering witchcraft is that we don't really have a crystal ball which we could use when we design machines. Uh, but the digital twins we, we try to use in the way that we would have better tools to do like prognosis, performance estimations, maybe, maybe uh, retrofits, maybe improvement in the next uh, family of design and so forth. So this is to replace engineering witchcraft, meaning mostly like educated guesses versus uh, measurements available. If you want to listen some more presentations, you could go to the website on Digitin Demo Day and you will see few of the uh, interesting presentations there. So, so there are a couple of presentations from research side, myself and our doctoral student Juso Autiosalo. Then there are actually several, several presentations from uh, industry side. And, and, and these presentations, I, I think they quite crisply, they elaborate how they, how they are going to use digital twins in their businesses. So there is like a more like designing uh, services industry 
manufacturing industry, industry software industry, and so forth. Uh, if we go back to, to the presentation, uh, IEEE Computer Society, they are listing uh, top technology trends for every year. Uh, I think uh, last year Isitin was somewhere in uh, position 11. Now it's uh, on, on third place. And I took a little bit copy paste from the website I thought to show you. Um, so Isitin is in, in third place and uh, it also like mentions cognitive pin, twins. And uh, in short, they say that it has become reality in manufacturing industry. It is widespread tool in uh, complex system operations. And these cognitive twins, I'm not going to speak about today, but they are maybe a little bit like emerging, let's say they are more like advanced digital things. And we can take a look on the website as well. So IEEE Computer Society has published this quite recently, I believe, okay, last December. Um, and uh, artificial intelligence is one, second is non-volatile memory, and the third is digital things. And I, I think this is rather short web page to read if you have further interest in, in the trends in computer society. So what this digital twin then could really be? Uh, there are so many definitions and I, I would really discourage of having like one correct definition. So I, definition I would more like to say that let's keep up quite many definitions and, and let's keep it up quite open because we don't really yet exactly know what it means. So for instance, if you are really nasty, you could ask what is the difference between like classical models, physics or database models versus these digital things. And I think in some cases we couldn't really distinguish those. So in, in those cases, it's more like a password or, or kind of like a way to avoid word model. But I'm trying to a little bit elaborate and make a digital twin definition a bit higher than a model. But it is, it is quite open and I would say that in the end of the day, there are quite many definitions which are probably more or less as correct as, as I'm proposing here. So basically you have like uh, some virtual or cyber physical part almost in any machine nowadays. So you do measurements, you collect big data, you have different like IoT. Uh, plugins or interfaces and these all are some type of like let's say appearances of uh, some digital twin system. Uh, our doctoral student Juso Autiosalo defined a digital twin being the cyber bar of the cyber physical system. I like the definition quite a lot although I'm going to present a little bit different but then it's up on you which one you want to select. I think uh, one feature which makes really distinction to traditional physical or mathematical or, or data based models is that you have really like data from physical system. Not only like equations, not only like theory, not only like sample, but you have some type of like continuous or I would say online data connection and you have this digital twin is somehow like living with your system. So you have a more direct connection to physical world than just a model based on physics or some some experience. Uh, how? Okay, I already said that there is probably not really like a 
standard realization. And um, in order to go a lot back in time, I took a couple of pictures from my old car. And when I'm turning ignition key on, there are like different check lights. And the car says that it is checking. And once I wait for a while, most of the lights, they fade away. And um, it says check OK. And once I start the engine, luckily also the rest of the slides will go away. Because I would be unhappy if this engine fault light would stay. But um, now my question is that is there some type of digital twin actually? existing in my old car. The car is model year 2007, so, so it is, it's, I would say that it's quite old already, but it is measuring sensor signals and it is doing some checkups so that sensor signals are in acceptable ranges. I don't know, does it do something else? Uh, it, it also checks like light bulbs and so on, so it does measurements and compares the results to, to some uh, known values. So I would say that this is kind of like a, let's say, early stage of a digital twin. You have measurements, you have some very simple model, and you, you, you say that it, is, it may be okay or or maybe not okay. But uh, I would say that this is nothing compared to today's op opportunities because, you know, my car is not yet connected to anything, only ground by via tires. Uh, but, but nowadays, you, you, modern cars are, are connected. They, they probably are even more connected in the future. Uh, so, so you have lots of opportunities there big data, artificial intelligence, industrial internet, different wireless communications, cloud computing, they are all creating opportunities to, to make more out of uh, the sensor readings we currently have. So I, I would say that if you plugged my car's sensor data somewhere, you might do like more like predictive maintenance for that. You might do some like driving assistance, give me advice for fuel saving, etc. So these are the opportunities. Uh, all the examples I'm saying are not probably that useful. If I'm not interested, let's say, predictive maintenance that my part of in my car will break in some time, then I'm, I'm not probably buying it. Or if I'm not interested in fuel saving, which I am actually am, but still I probably I would not be buying this advice. So that we have to also judge that are these different gadgets, are they really like worth of making a service so that somebody will, will be happily using those things. So since I took this car example, I thought that I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate some more example in, in mobility what type of functionalities you have. So check engine light you have probably had almost 20 years in, in, in cars. Nowadays you have uh, lots of like driving assistance. Very simple one is uh, driver alertness, alertness, which this coffee mug is referring. So if you drive a car and, and if you drive it somehow recklessly, it, the, the, the car might suggest you a coffee break. You have a navigator, you have a different like travel planners. If you have an electric car you, and you put, uh, you, you start with the full battery, for instance, and, and you put the destination in, in your navigator, the car will drive it and use the, use the uh, electric and combustion engine so, uh, so that uh, you will reach your destination. If you have a hybrid car, it will it will run the battery empty just when you reach the destination. If you have electric car, fully electric car, I mean, it will tell you what speed and what 
distance you can make in order to make it to the destination or to the next start point. You have uh, then out of the car you have different adaptive traffic control systems, uh, traffic lights. Okay, they are very traditional, but you can make them smart. You can give priorities for different vehicles. Uh, in uh, some uh, countries where you have more congestion pro problems, you have have even booms which are preventing cars to go to highway when when traffic is too high in order to avoid total jam uh, and now my my message is that if you can couple these and possibly many other services together I think you have quite a lot of opportunities and there is need for different models different uh, advisory systems etc which we are calling digital twin so lots of challenges are here i i would say that this is much easier to speculate and tell what and how it could work but more difficult to realize because then you have to think about what measurements you have what type of data connections you have uh, how you maintain your systems, etc. So I think realization, how you access the data. You have lots of big data nowadays, but I unfortunately, in my opinion, it all often means bad data. How do you update your systems? How about if your physical part is updated, how you update the digital part? And how do you manage complexity? And then how your digital things, how they scale up. And with scaling up, I mean, for example, car again. So about 80 million cars are produced annually. Uh, so, so will we have like 80 million digital twins stored on some hard drive annually? So there are questions that we somehow like maintain them configurable, etc. But I, I think these are, these are very common challenges for many IT services. Then I, I have collected a few examples here. So, so this is uh, now totally different from a car, but it's a machine tool. And uh, you can see the reference for to the publication below. Uh, the, the, the researchers, they are basically like censoring the, the machine tool and uh, they are trying to do better diagnostics, prognostics, and optimization of a machine tool. So uh, they, they use different tools to, to analyze the quality of the product they are machining, to analyze the wear and tear of, of uh, tools they are using, and of course, the objective there is to optimize the production of the machine tool. For the second example, I wanted to show that if you then have like a set of digital twins, it can be quite complex. So now we could say that our machine tool could be over here in the bottom, but it's only a part of the factory and it belongs to to, to some subsets, which again belong to some other subsets, and, uh, and, and then all this together form a factory or a set of factories. So you have actually quite many layers. You have physical layer here in bottom, but then you have like uh, cyber physical layers and several different digital layers. And now actually my question is, where is the digital twin? Well, it could be could be somewhere here, maybe in a bit lower level, but it could be as well here. Let's say you have a you are benchmarking the factories, uh, and 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 you might have like a digital twin of factory something. So lots of questions: how to organize the data, and you will see a reference on the bottom. Well, to, to, to one publication. 
Uh, then I wanted to show very, I would say, old idea. Uh, this is this tracking simulator has used quite a lot in in uh, let's say low level application. So you are running a machine control here, and your machine is here. You have model here, and you have different identification or parameter adaptation mechanism here. Then you can maybe run like offline studies, back office, office support refers to offline studies, and you can improve your machine control. And you have here lots of like classical tools which may be relevant. So, so this is like a control theory, theory, adaptive control, different stochastic method, Monte Carlo, etc. And then industrial internet or internet of things brings a new thing to this very old thing or quite old thing is that you can plug this service over IoT. So you might you can maybe maybe do it uh, in let's say outside the factory. You can maybe sell a service to manufacturer to for this back office support and so forth. So you had three examples here, and uh, as a conclusion, I would say that uh, in some cases it's really hard to distinguish the digital twin from a physical model of a system, and then it's a hybrid only. But um, uh, there is some value promise in digital twins being more than just a physical model. And at least I would like to define it in the way that it's not just a model. So we are not just going along the hype. In, in my own definition of digital twin, I would say it's a model, plugged to a system and providing online information about the system operation. And now uh, the model could be data-based, it could be physics-based, it could be some type of hybrid maybe experience space. And I think business potential is quite obvious. If you are able to find a process or, or system, you can predict with reasonable accuracy and people people are interested of, uh, of having this prediction. And quite many things actually could be improved with better prediction and planning. I, I, I claim there is a room for improvement. So, thank you. Uh, this is now a video lecture, so I think the questions must come offline, and I, I let the uh, lecturer define how we treat these. Uh, final thing I would Propose you are an exercise. You can do this in individually or you can do it with your pair or group or so forth. But uh, I would like you to think about digital twin design. You can pick an application, you can, you can take one of the li listed or, or just develop your own application. And, but, but, but once you have designed, decided your application, think about what you need for successful digital twin realization. What sensors you need? How do you organize? Are they like IoT? Are they like uh, uh, some? Do you have to install something? What decision making you need? Will it be in cloud? Will it be in your mobile phone? Will it be elsewhere? What is a good user interface for digital twin? So is it like, again, your mobile phone, maybe your audio, depending on application. But uh, for instance, like a sports training might be, audio might be good because then you have headphones and you don't have to look at any mobile phone. Where do you store the data? and other possibly privacy issues if the data is distributed 
is there use of it? Uh, is there benefit if you can use other, let's say, trainings, trainers tra data or other vehicles data or other data? Will you face with GDPR questions? Who will pay for your service? Is it just uh, fun to have but nobody pays or is it really like that everyone wants to have it and, and, and you, you can charge it? How you distribute it? Will, will you upload it to the, the App Store or something similar? And how do you make it profitable? So think about it and, and, and think about the opportunities. Of how, how, how to use digital things. Thank you again. And good luck in your future career.